this is just a quick assembly video of the Loki J474 35 millimeter motor. It goes in this 38740 case. And here's my phenolic liner. Here are all the propellant grains that I've spread out here. First thing to do is make sure you have the right nozzle. So you look for the nozzle printed on there, which in this case is 28. And you want to make sure that that matches the nozzle in the instructions. Then we've got the O-ring that goes on the nozzle and the instructions say that if there is an orange one, that's where it goes. So I've got that down there. These are the six little O-rings. They're gonna go around the smoke element in a minute. Here is the forward closure and the O-ring that goes around that. Here's the cap. If you're gonna use a delay charge, you can use that to cap it, but I'm just gonna run this as a plug motor. Here are my snap ring pliers. This is the brand that uh, the Loki Research website recommends, but a lot of brands will work fine. Here's the snap ring on the forward end. Here's the snap ring on the aft end. Here is the nozzle washer that goes on before that. And I've also got some super lube lubricant here that we'll use on the O-rings, and I also like to spread it on the phenolic liner because it makes it easier to pull it out after the flight. So the motor I'm assembling here is the Loki Cocktail J474. The Cocktail formula is available in a lot of the different Loki motors. It's a really cool formula. I've flown it on an M motor, which was just spectacular. This is gonna be a really nice J flight. One thing to keep in mind is that you wanna have the red grains should be down on the aft end. And you can tell they're red, not by the color so much as the fact that they're a large bore compared to these blue grains, which are small bore. And that is clearly illustrated in the directions, the red grains and the blue grains. And you notice the first of the blue grains has a little bit of chamfer on it, which is helpful when you're putting in your igniter. This has happened to me on the field where you it's hard to get into that more narrow bore area and the angle there helps out quite a bit. So that's the one thing to check here. First line them up, large bore, red grains, small bore, blue grains, which go on the, the forward closure end, and then find the one that has the chamfered spot on it, which is this one. So it's flat on this side, chamfered on that side. That means it's gonna go like this and it's gonna serve as a connector between the red and the blue grains, like that. So I'll go ahead and start with the smoke element. So there are the six little black O-rings and the idea is that they're gonna go around this. And Scott points out that the best way to do this is to simply set them on a flat surface, hard surface, and go one at a time until they're all lined up. And so after you do that, they look like this, all stacked up on the smoke elements. Kind of hard to do that with one hand while I'm holding the video camera, but you get the idea. That's gonna go inside this forward closure. And I first need to put a thin layer of grease inside there. I also need to grease up this O-ring. I also need to grease up this O-ring. And Scott recommends a thin amount of grease on this end and inside here on this end of the motor case. These little O-rings should also be greased up. Just try to keep the ends of the smoke element dry. Okay, so you can see I've slipped that smoke element with the six O-rings down inside the foreclosure. And I've also put the O-ring on there. It's all lubed up. And then down here on this end, I have put in the orange O-ring. It's, sometimes it's just a black O-ring, but the restrictions say if there's an orange O-ring, it goes on the nozzle, so that's what I did. And you might notice I've lined up everything according to the way it's gonna go in the motor. 
maybe I'm being paranoid, but I find that ensures that I don't put something in the wrong direction or backwards or something like that between two different parts. This isn't so hard here at home when I'm just taking my time, but when you're out on the field assembling it, it's very possible to quickly put it together in a way that's incorrect. And in my opinion, anyway, I think a lot of the issues that happen on the field where uh, equipment fails is often user error. We sometimes like to blame the vendors, but actually it's often just because the user puts it together incorrectly or too hurriedly. So my strategy is to line everything up exactly in the order it's going to go in, and that way I'm less likely to make a dumb mistake, which I've definitely made in the past. All right, so with that in mind, I've got the grains all lined up so that I'll be sure and insert them in the right order. If there are no lines marked on here, then that means the order doesn't matter, except that, as I said, this is a red-blue cocktail, and so you need to have the large red grains, large bore red grains at the bottom, and the small bore blue grains at the top, and then the connector grain should be this one here, which is chamfered, connects up to the large bore of this red grain. And I'm just double checking that a million times to make sure I don't get it wrong somehow, double checking the instructions, which are extremely clear. So I'm just sliding these in one at a time until I get to the end. So that's all greased up, and I'm gonna slide that in so that the nozzle is on the end with the thrust ring. And it's in there far enough so that the snap ring groove is visible. And what we're gonna do is slide on the nozzle washer and then put that snap ring, the aft snap ring, into the snap ring groove. And this is where you use the snap ring pliers and be sure and use eye protection because these things sometimes snap. But if you just pull them together really tightly in there, they will go in. And if you can see down in there, there's the snap ring. It's on top of the nozzle washer. And you want to double check really carefully that the snap ring is in the groove all the way around. But again, look closely at it wearing eye protection. This one's in there very nicely. So the aft end is finished. And now all I gotta do is put in the forward closure, slide that in, put its snap ring on top of it, and we're ready to fly. So now the snap ring on the forward closure is in place. I've double checked it, wearing eye protection, making sure that the snap ring's really in the groove all the way around, and it is. And that motor is ready to fly. If you were gonna use a charge, now is the time you'd put that in. You'd measure out however much you wanted, put a little bit of wadding on top of it, and then put on this red cap. In my case, I'm just gonna be flying this as a plug motor with dual deploy, so I'm not gonna put any charge in. So this is ready to go. But if I was gonna put in a, a charge as a backup charge or something, you would want to keep in mind that you can drill it down. The instructions say to drill down 1 16th of an inch for every two seconds that you want to reduce the delay. And you can find the total delay length on the front of the instructions. It's going to be 18 seconds if you don't drill anything. And so you would just reduce that by whatever amount you need. And so that is the assembly of the Loki J474 cocktail. It's a really cool propellant formula. I've flown it in other size motors. I love it. The red and blue mixed together to make this cool purplish pinkish flame. And it's really, this J motor was quite a straightforward build. I don't know why I keep making these videos. It's just fun to do. And I thought it might be useful for someone because even though Loki motors are really cool and really reliable, sometimes people are less familiar with this brand, but I think they should be because it's a really cool brand and it's really reliable. <laughs>